I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, UML Part 2. So we talked uh, in our last video about classes and objects in UML. Now we're going to talk about how to describe behavior. We'll talk about state diagrams and sequence diagrams. So here is the basic form for a state machine. This is a state. The state is a box with rounded corners. Notice that the objects had square corners. So we have two states, state A and state B. This is a transition. Notice the form of the arrowhead. The arrowhead has two sides and is open. That is the particular type of arrow you use for a transition in a state machine. Okay. So these state machines are event-driven. They're not like hardware state machines where you have a clock that evaluates the state on every clock cycle. These are behavioral descriptions. So an event is a change in something. An external input changes or perhaps another object sends you an event. So when you get an event that you're interested in, that the machine is defined to look at, then the machine evaluates its state and decides what transition to take to go to the next state. Okay. And we can think about several different types of events, just to be more particular about what an event is. A signal is an asynchronous event, so hitting a key, you don't know when that's going to happen. A call is a synchronized communication, so when um, an object call, uses a, a routine, a function, to call another object, that you know when you're making that call. That's synchronized. And a timer is activated by time. So it's, it's not um, determined by the software per se, but it's synchronized to the uh, real-world clock. So here's an example of a signal event. You'll notice that we've used the stereotype here. Um, so we have a generic um, class signal. This is a particular um, object uh, class called mouse click. It has some attributes here. So this defines a particular type of event. And in our state machine, when you get a mouse click event in state A, then you go to state B and you call this function. Here's a call event, so when you're in state C, you just, uh, that state calls the drawbox function and goes to state D. And in a, for a timer event, you're in state E, the timer times out with a certain value, then you go to your next state. So here's an example of a state machine. This black dot is the start state. The black dot with a circle around it is the finish state. So from the start, we can do two different things. If we're in the drawing region, if the mouse is in the drawing region, then we go to found object here, and that makes us perform this call in this state to the highlight function, right, which is going to draw a highlight around that object on the screen, and then we've gone to the object highlighted state, and then we finish. The other case is if we get a mouse click, um, as input, then our output after the slash is going to be find region. That means we found a region. If the region is menu, then our output will be calling which menu. We go to got menu item. We call this next function call menu. We go to the state where we completed the call menu item, and then we finish. So. Another important type of diagram in UML is a sequence diagram. It shows a sequence of operations over time and it allows us to relate the behavior of multiple objects. Okay. This is a little bit like a timing diagram in hardware, but we usually don't have a very detailed notion of time. We have more of a notion of the order in which things happen. Okay. So here's a sequence diagram. They're typically drawn vertically. So we have the set of objects um, going across the page, across the screen. We have a mouse, we have a display, and we have a menu in this case. This comment just says the time's going vertically from the top to the bottom. Okay. So each object has a dotted arrow just so we can see what um, actions are underneath what objects. 
So here, the mouse is active, that's what this box means, and when we get a mouse click, then uh, the display state becomes active. And it further activates two other things, which menu and then call menu. Okay, so the sequence diagram shows the relationship between what the mouse is doing, what the display object is doing, and what the menu is doing. And we can see by looking across here what objects are active at any given time. So we can use state machines to describe behavior, and we can use sequence diagrams to describe the interactions between objects.